So today I'd like to talk about uh, certain psychic abilities. Uh, one in particular that I'm going to go into. So we've got different psychic abilities. Most people think of clairvoyance only. Um, there, there are a lot of different psychic abilities. So we've got, I'm going to do a whole another segment just on psychic abilities, but I'm just going to run through them quickly so we can jump into the topic for today. Okay, so we've got clear cognizance. Clear cognizance is clear knowing. So uh, I guess sometimes you just know things. Sometimes you know that the phone's going to ring and someone's going to be on the other end. Or you just have a feeling like perhaps you you know where the car park is or you know that you need to turn right. There's no real logical reason for you knowing something but you just have a feeling and you know it and you follow it and it's right. And clear cognizance also covers channeling. So when you channel information from the universe, from guides, from angels, what have you, that's through the crown chakra, so at the top of the head. Clairvoyance, that's usually the umbrella that everything comes under. That is clear seeing. So, fortune telling, I think mediumship, come, come, it's separate, but it, it's more of a third eye type of um, ability. And it tends to link with clairvoyance a little bit more, I think. Um, <coughs> Also dreams. Some people who are more clairvoyant, uh, they dream more and sometimes those dreams come true. They've, they've just got more, a stronger connection with the dream time. Uh, clairsent, not clairsentience, clairsent, is to smell. It's when you can psychically smell. This is one thing, I. these are kind of, the, these two that I'm coming up to now, they're kind of newer ones that um, they're not as well known so clear scent I jokingly call it clear smellience when you can sometimes smell psychically so for instance if there's a spirit in the room I'm not a medium if there's a spirit in the room I'll sense them because I'm an empath uh, and, so, and I'll often smell as well so if that person was a heavy smoker I'll smell smoke if they were an alcoholic or, or heavy drinker, I'll smell alcohol. Or if they're old, I'll get that old man smell. Um, so smelling is it's a, quite a strong sense. And clairgustance is to taste. The one that I am going to speak about today is clairsentience uh, or an empathic ability. Now to me, they're, they're pretty much merged. They do have slight differences, but clairsentience is to feel, so clear feeling. And this is my strongest sense. I'm usually a stronger in a couple, and there's no reason you can't work on them all to get stronger. It's like a muscle. You use it, it grows, you get stronger at it. Um, so I'm naturally clairsentient, uh, claircognizance and or clear cognizant and uh, clear scent which is to smell but predominantly I'm an empath that's my thing uh, so I'm going to talk about that today because I actually think that well clairvoyance is the most well known I actually think that more people are more clairsentient so and it, because it's so unknown or it's not unknown, but it's it's not very well known. Uh, a lot of artists are very empathic. Uh, they're very clairsentient. There's a whole there's a whole. Uh, I'll get to that later. Anyway, so I'm going to speak about clairsentience and empathic abilities today because there are so many people. I see them all the time. I recognise the symptoms. I can sense. Uh, someone who's empathic. Abby, do not play with the cord, please. 
I've always got a cat who wants to play with the camera. No. Do not. I'm just going to pull the whole thing down. Abby, do I need to get the spray bottle? Okay. Let's hope that she leaves it alone. It's unlikely. She's a very cheeky girl. So I see a lot of people around who... Uh, I see the symptoms of them being clairsentient and being empathic, not knowing it, and then trying to suppress it, or they're lashing out, or they're getting angry, and I can see where that's coming from. So I want to talk about it today and put it out there, and over the weeks I'll give tips on protection and how to work with it. I'm going to have to pause this. Okay, so I'm back. I've got my... I tried to get Abby to put her out of the room, but she, she ran under the bed. So I've got my little squeak gun, <laughs> which is um, what we do when she starts ripping things to shreds because she's that kind of kitty. Okay, so... So, yes. And when people are struggling with uh, empathic abilities and, and certain psychic abilities, well, they're a gift if you don't know how to use them and if you are completely, you know, ignorant of them, and I don't mean ignorant in a bad way. Um, <clears throat> we didn't get taught this in school. It, it, it can feel like a curse. It's a, it can be a really, really hard thing to live with and you can go down some unhealthy paths with it. So so how do you know if you're clairsentient or an empath anyway? For one, you're going to be really sensitive. Remember clairsentience is all about clear feeling, it's all about emotions, it's all about feeling. So not just feeling what you're feeling yourself, it's about feeling what everyone around you is feeling. We're, we all have an energy field and our energy fields when they come in contact with other people's energies, tr the energy of a tree and animals energy, it's communicating whether we know it or not or whether you, you know aware of it or not that's what's happening. So all this for an empath or for a sensitive you know you're getting all this data that's coming in. For an empath you're not only feeling your emotions, your feelings, what's going on with you, but you're also feeling the emotions and the feelings of everyone else. So anyone else that's around you, any energies that are around you, especially if they're negative. If you see me do that, I'm just I'm squirting it so she doesn't pull the camera down. Um, <clears throat> and that can be hard to deal with because it can really it can implode on you if you can imagine just you've got all your own it's hard enough dealing with all of your own stuff let alone your stuff and then the entire world's stuff because there's the aspect of yeah I can feel the energies of the animals that are around me or the people that are, are directly in the room that can be really strong and overpowering um, but it's not limited by distance either. So if I have a connection to someone, it can be an ex, it can be a family member that's, you know, far away. But if I have or have had a connection to someone that I haven't severed or broken or cut the ties with, uh, if they're going through something, they'll pop into my head, um, I'll dream about them, I'll just feel like I'm thinking about them all the time and I'll feel what they're feeling. I'll feel what's going on with them. Okay, so you're sensitive to the energies around you. You feel what other people are feeling even if they're not in the same room. You take on other people's emotions, even their sicknesses. So for example, and, and this can be like you feel their emotions, this can also have an impact physically. So, for example, if I'm in the room with someone and they're going through something, you know, emotional, on the surface they can be acting fine, 
but 